Let's take a look at Cobb LED strip versus the traditional sort of pixely LED strip. So the traditional LED strips that first came out were based, typically they were 12 volt, and they had a resistor and then three LEDs per section. The three LEDs in series and then the resistor to limit the current through those. And you could cut it at every roughly, well, what is this one? Um, a ruler. Is this going to be metric or imperial? It is metric, 50 millimetres, which is roughly two inches. The Cobb stuff also cuts every two inches or 50 millimetres, but there's a huge difference. Where that, whereas there's only three LEDs in each section, and the Cobb stuff, there are actually 16 tiny little LEDs under here, and I'll show you them lit. So I'll have to wake the power bank up, turn it on, keep in mind that this one metre section, that's just over uh, three feet, um, it's very bright. Uh, actually draws over two amps and it's just they're not running the leds super hard it just so happens that there are well there's approximately 320 of them in one meter section it does come with a dimmer so let's see if i can dim this down to the point you can see the slight pixeliness so dimming there we go ah right okay oh slight ripple there that's the pulse of the modulation but now you can see how close those leds are and you wouldn't normally see these dots on the tape because the phosphor would normally sort of help diffuse them out. I chose the blue stuff for this because I was hoping it was going to be clear gel, but it is diffused to actually try and diffuse that. But nonetheless, I cut a bit off and I uh, took some photos to see what we could see. So I shall zoom out with this. So each section has one, two, three, four, Five. Actually, this is less than a section. I've cut this down. But uh, Each section actually has eight sets of these. A little resistor. I believe it's a 0603 resistor. And then what are called flip chip LEDs. And I'll show you what those are afterwards. And the resistor is uh, in series with the two LEDs in parallel. They've just done that to reduce the number of resistors. Technically speaking, it means that you can cut this tape in the these sections here, you could actually cut it down to a very fine length. Based on the fact that this is eight millimeters wide across it, uh, the flip chips themselves, the tiny little LEDs are approximately one millimeter, which is bigger than I was expecting. But I t uh, destroyed this one and scrubbed it away to get into the copper, as you can see. And that shows the pads, the resistor, and the solder on the flip chips, which are soldered directly to the copper tracks. And we see the bus bar track coming along here, going down to the two LEDs, and then the one up here coming up to the resistor, and then going down to the LEDs. And I can show you this in more detail if I bring in a doodle that I did of it. Here is my doodle. So here are the bus bar tracks, and they are, once again, echoed on both sides of the circuit board and every time you come across these uh, cutting pads it also bonds across to the other side at that point. The flip chips are LEDs that can be soldered directly onto the circuit board. I can show you what I mean by that right now. A conventional LED would have had the multiple layers and then a gold bond wire going off the chip onto pads and it's very time consuming for manufacturer. The flip chip actually has pads built on and it solders on just like a surface mount component but it is the most bare component possible it's basically a bare chip with no carrier that solders onto the pads very very tiny goodness knows how they do the pick and place in those but there are advantages to this it's much easier to manufacture because you pick and place onto solder paste uh, and it's also got better thermal coupling into the actual circuit board for dissipating and that's why so many of the large cob arrays of leds use the flip chip now it saves the problem of stress that used to get the gold bond wires, and it also just makes it a lot cheaper to manufacture. So that's these little LEDs here, and they'll have that little bridge of solder at the end. Uh, this is the configuration. You get the plus 5 volts, and it comes down to those LEDs, and then it goes uh, through through that resistor, uh, which is rated 150 ohms, and the current is shared between the two LEDs. It's typically about 16 milliamps per pair, so each LED is drawing roughly about 8 milliamps. And it's an interesting effect. Uh, the spacing is 3.1 millimetres between them. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very dense. It gives a good effect. And uh, 
They do other versions that are only apparently four millimeter wide that run at higher voltage. They can't really do them at the lower voltage because uh, with the five volts, the current gets up very quickly. I wouldn't want to run even even with uh, one meter. That is over two amps at five volts. The voltage drop is going to be fairly significant along the run from end to end. And it's significant enough that if you actually work out the current, well, if I was to cut a little section off this um, and uh, power it up on its own, it would draw slightly more current than the other se segments in the strip because as the voltage dropped, the current would decrease through them. I'm going to power this up again because I did an experiment. I did a random cut and got lucky. You can actually see one of the flip chips right up the end there. I don't know if you're going to see that sharp point of light. Uh, I'll try dimming it down a bit. That might work. Can you see the point of light there? Uh, I got lucky and just skimmed across that, but left it intact. If you cut the strip, say for instance, right in the middle of a resistor, or with that LED in its own, I guess one of the LEDs will go quite bright. It's a bit of, bit of a lucky dip. I'm going to turn the LEDs off before I do this. I'm going to cut it again. Mm. Let's see, I think that's probably just cut one. It has. There's a very slight difference in intensity because all the current is going through that one LED now. You can't really see it. Um, but it does mean that you can pretty much cut it to any length you like, really, and you may just lose maybe three millimetres or so of the uh, illumination at the end of the strip, much like the uh, 5 volt LED neon, the way they manufacture that. They just cut it wherever they feel like it. And the glow, residual glow from the, the LED that's remained intact kind of spreads up to the end. But it's neat stuff. The uh, thinner stuff is about four millimeters thick. It uses the 12 volts or 24 volts because they can do that uh, because it keeps the current down. And also it is basically largely bus bar in the back of the circuit board and to a degree in the front and then just everything's squished in. But it's pretty neat. It produces a very sharp uh, line of light and that is quite smart compared to the traditional stuff like this that produced a very pixely effect. Um, it's also available because they're using blue chips or ultraviolet chips behind a uh, phosphor. Uh, it's available in a wide range of colours. So it's quite smart stuff. A very interesting evolution.